Good morning, guys, and welcome to your Bitcoin report, your Bitcoin show. <clears throat> I'm really glad to have you guys here. Today is uh, Friday, Friday, March 1st, 1st of March, <laughs> 2019. Anyway, let's get started. Let's open up the charts and take a look at what's going on. This news, an awful lot of people might not see it as hugely important to crypto, but this is huge importance. Uh, Facebook and other internet platforms plan to launch new cryptocurrencies. Now, there's businesses out there. They're called money remittance businesses, and they're huge. Western Union is one of the largest of them, and this is how they make money. They make money by taking a cut, a sizable cut, whenever you want to send money to somebody. Uh, these guys here, uh, Facebook being a huge company, uh, they're, go they're planning on rolling out cryptocurrencies over the next year that are meant to allow, allow users to send money contracts on their messaging systems. Like Venmo, uh, PayPal can move across international borders. Uh, they can move this money across international borders. It's This is an anticipated but secretive project that's underway at Facebook. The company is working on a coin that allow users of WhatsApp and Facebook, they can send to friends and family instantly uh, money, and I guess it's going to be anonymous, and this money will be able to move transparently through the system, almost like you send an email. You're going to be able to send money now, just like you send an email. And, I mean, this is big, because these money remittance businesses, you know, they're taking a huge cut, and this is probably going to be an awful lot cheaper way of sending money. Because they're, they're going to use crypto, it's probably going to be, uh, probably uh, they take. I'm going to tell you, these money remittance businesses like Western Union take like 10 percent of your money just to send it. So if you send like a thousand dollars, you're going to lose like a hundred bucks. You know, this is probably going to be more like you send a thousand, you lose five dollars, sort of thing. It's probably going to be a lot cheaper, and so. Money remittance businesses, look out. Now, I've spotted a new trend in the last week or two. And sometimes something will be right under your nose and you don't see it. And that's the way this was for the longest time. It was under my nose with Bitcoin. Uh, it was something I didn't see until quite recently. And what I've spotted is, is it's the way Bitcoin is created with its scarcity factor. Actually, Litecoin, too, is created in the same order. And this is why both of these coins have established this new Lightning Network together, Litecoin and Bitcoin. It's the way these two coins are created. They're created in such a way that they are like a hoarders, somebody who hoards things. They're like the ultimate dream of a hoarder. Now, you have to understand something, too. Gold bugs out there and silver bugs... They're all hoarders. This is the kind of person that stacks. They're called stackers. They stack silver and they stack gold. They're hoarders. They're the same sort of people who oftentimes you have that same sort of a person who will uh, who will uh, save money in their bank account. They're savers, too. You know, and they look at that number on their bank book or on their bank statement and Every time it goes up and they're able to save money and they're able to get more and more money in their bank account, they're actually hoarding money. And they can deny it all they want. They're hoarders. There's a lot of hoarders out there, people. Believe me. Now, I know there's a type of person that spends money as soon as they get it. They're not the hoarding type mentality. But your friend and your neighbor, your neighbor next door, or you might be a hoarder and you might know exactly what I'm talking about. Bitcoin is set up, and this is what HODLers are. Basically, they're hoarders. They're hoarding cryptocurrencies, and they're hanging on to them for dear life, HODL. There's an army of hoarders out there. Bitcoin, the whole world is full of, actually full of hoarders. There's hoarders everywhere in every country. There's people who hoard things, people who collect things, people who save things. And maybe I'm... Maybe I'm being a little bit harsh, calling them hoarders, 
they're not hoarders in the strict sense of the word, but I'm using that term to describe that type of person. And all over the world, doesn't matter what culture you're in, there's people like that. And they represent quite a large percentage of the population. Bitcoin, the way it's designed by its very nature, it's going to appeal to these people worldwide. It hasn't spread worldwide yet, but you know, there's not enough Bitcoin to go around to all these hoarders. Let's just face facts, folks. There's only ever going to be 21 million, and they've probably lost quite a few. <laughs> you know what I mean? And there's going to be more lost as time goes by, because I've done articles on this before, how, how people leave tiny bits of Bitcoin in their wallets, and then they forget about their wallet, and they end up their computer ends up going to the junk or whatever, and tiny little bits get lost. Not so recently, a large chunk got lost on a exchange called Quadriga, Canadian exchange. It was like $190 million worth of Bitcoin. They lost the passwords or whatever. Some uh, The guy got sick and died and boom, his passwords are gone, whatever. I mean, it just Bitcoin continually gets lost. So that 21 million keeps shrinking back and getting in, in the... And the mine, the amount the miners have to mine for is, during the halvings means they only get to have as half as much as they get to mine. So it'll be less Bitcoin coming in at a certain point, and it's going to have to be distributed worldwide. And what you're going to see is, is you're going to see tremendous amount of money coming into the space, institutional investors coming in soon, and everything. So it's going to start Bitcoin going up in value, up in value con on a consistent basis. At the same time, you got a worldwide army of hoarders who want to hoard the stuff, who want to save it and hang on to it for dear life. So for all these guys out there who are waiting for Bitcoin and waiting for Litecoin to become this new uh, vehicle for transactions so that they can buy a cup of coffee with it and so that they can use it here and use it there and use it for all this kind of stuff, I'm, I hate to disappoint them. But what I see is something totally different. What I see is a, a transfer happening of value. In other words, it becoming the new gold. And an army of hoarders worldwide hanging on to this stuff for dear life and not letting go. And the more they hang on, the more the price is going to increase. And the more the price increases, the more incentive they have to hang on. And... What this is going to do is the transactions across the Bitcoin network, I could see them actually dwindling as time goes by. As we move outwards in this further and further, people are not going to want to spend the stuff. As it keeps going up higher and higher, less and less transactions because people are just going to sit on it. And that's just going to make it go higher. It's a, it's a self-perpetuating, self-feeding, vicious cycle where Bitcoin could actually suck in most of the world's value and wealth into just one coin, and that one coin be the underpinning for the entire market of other cryptocurrencies, which are used as currencies. Like, like perhaps coins like Digibyte, or, or coins like Dash, or coins like Monero, or coins like... like uh, just a second, uh, coins like uh, Ethereum and, 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 and XRP and, and, and EOS are all in there vying. Bitcoin Cash, Tether, all these top coins, Stellar, Tron, Binance Coin, uh, Bitcoin SV, Cardano, you know, they're all in there. They're all in there vying for this these positions as currency. And an awful lot of them, like like say EOS, for instance, you know, are more capable than Bitcoin, far more capable of covering things like buying a cup of coffee. But they're not sitting in the seat of being the hoarder's dream. They're sitting in the seat where, where their value might not go up exceeding, it might go up a lot from what it is now, but it might not suck up all of the world's wealth, these other coins. What they might do is they might, they might go up in value in comparison to Bitcoin, but still be used as more for transactions and stuff. And the networks that are established might be established on these altcoins for day-to-day -day transactions, and the merchants will be able to instantly 
by computer verify that transaction and what that coin is worth in Bitcoin. So you might be spending an altcoin like like uh, Cardano or something like that, or or or, uh, or an altcoin like uh, like EOS, for instance, or Stellar. You might be using it to make your purchases with, but at the store, they are going to instantly convert that into Bitcoin. How much Bitcoin is it worth? But the transaction will be made in the coin like Stellar. And Bitcoin will be the underpinning for this entire market. I, I, I can see this the way this is going. Bitcoin being the underpinning forever for this entire market. But the Bitcoin's trans, actual transaction volume on the Bitcoin network will be very, very small. Whereas these other coins will take up the slack and they'll be used as the currencies. And they're far more capable of it. This is the way I see it going right now. This is the way it seems to be stacking up. And Bitcoin and these other coins are preparing themselves to accept this voluminous amount of capital that's going to flow into the market. Now, let's talk about that. The capital that's going to flow into the market. When this capital, and we've seen capital flow into the market before, but it flowed back out. That's because it was still kind of a speculative in investment. And also, it went into a bubble. And also, you have to understand the timing wasn't quite right. We didn't have the financial collapse actually happening yet when when that happened, when Bitcoin went up to uh, about $800 billion market capital. Well, since it settled back down to $130 billion now, but it's prepared itself better. The networks have actually, and the coins have actually spread out and they're preparing themselves. You know, they're preparing themselves for this feast on capital. And let's talk about the capital. This time, when it goes up, it might be not such a quick snap of an increase in capital where it shoots up to $800 billion, But this time, it might be a steady, slow increase at first. As it slowly marches toward a billion. I can see it passing a billion dollar, uh, I mean, uh, not, a, not a billion, I meant a trillion, as it slowly marches up toward a trillion. I can see it passing a trillion dollars in market cap and actually passing two trillion. I see when it gets up around three trillion or more market cap, something very strange and unusual happening. It actually have it starting to have a very profound effect because its market cap is so great. Starting to have a very profound effect upon the actual fiat currencies. So, like it's almost like a transfer in market capital. In other words, the fiat currencies all have a certain market cap, just like crypto does. And when crypto's market cap starts to get to a surge to a certain point. The fiat market caps might start to actually, in other words, what they're actually worth. See, everything right now is priced in dollars. I see eventually a transitioning, ha a transition happening, where in the end everything's going to be priced in Bitcoin worldwide. I mean, I mean, for me to even say that, it's like it sounds like I'm committing heresy by saying that Bitcoin would be everything in the world would be priced in Bitcoin. But yes, I can see that future. Now that this thing's out of the barn, I don't know exactly where it come from, who created it. But now that the horse is out of the barn, just because it's fell off back to $130 billion doesn't mean that it, it's not growing under the surface. It is. And that's part of why these companies like Facebook and their... their uh, app that they use whatsapp and stuff all this all this is growing huge while we speak you know the lightning network is growing everything's being established for this i see a huge future in cryptocurrencies but i also see this creating huge disruption what i'm one of the things that i'm worried about very worried about is how how fast this transition of capital will happen and I see once Bitcoin goes over $3 trillion in market cap, it and the altcoins together, that something very strange and unusual happening, I see it blossoming very quickly then. In other words, going from $3 trillion to $5 trillion in absolutely no time. And, and it having an effect on all of these other markets of fiat currency, and it could actually be the catalyst 
because it grows so big and so fast. In other words, Bitcoin would be deflating at that point in time. And what that means is, is means is if say you had a Bitcoin at that particular time that was worth a hundred thousand dollars, and say the market capital on Bitcoin, the altcoins, was at three trillion. When Bitcoin is deflating, it means simply that your coin is worth $100,000 today and tomorrow it's worth $110,000 and the next day $120,000. Now I'm going to ask you a simple question. If you had one Bitcoin that was at $100,000 and the very next day it was at $110,000, would you sell it? If you knew that the next day after that it was going to be $120,000 and then the next day in do priced in dollars and at a certain point a transition's going to start to happen where what it's worth in dollars is going to go up so fast because the dollar's hyperinflating, which means the dollar is moving in the opposite direction. It's going down in value, while Bitcoin and the cryptocurrencies are deflating, moving up in value. This is going to be a very strange, very, very strange situation, and it's going to cause the Bitcoin network to almost freeze in a, the amount of transactions that are occurring. Because if Bitcoin is going up that quick in price and that much capital is flowing in, the only the only transactions that are going to be occurring, because most everyone's going to be sitting on what they got, is people that are buying in. And yes, folks, we can have a Bitcoin shortage. And yes, folks, we can have many, many, many new miners trying to hop on the network, and it would be a mad, mad rush into mining again, even though the mining difficulty is so hard. We can have things like this happen. So listen, stay tuned and stay in, uh, stay informed, and uh, thank you for listening to my channel. Thank you for listening to this report. I really appreciate my audience out there, each and every one of you. I especially enjoy my my audience that likes to put in a little comment here and there i really love hearing those comments i try to read every single one of them mostly i answer on the ones that are questions uh but i like them all i read them all and i really value you guys thank you and very much and we'll see you in the next show bye bye guys